Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to show you some exercises you can do at home that can potentially improve your tennis game. And for you guys that have wooden rackets at home, remember they used to come with a cover that would only cover the head of the racket. And it was perfect to put a book in the cover and then you close the cover that could serve as a weight to the racket and this is a great exercise. So many of you do not have wooden rackets and it's not a problem. You simply grab a book and then you're going to take painter's tape and you're going to tape it around your racket head. Now make sure you use painter's tape when you do this because once you pull it off it's not going to damage the book. But now only with one book my racket is a lot heavier and I'm going to practice some shadow strokes. And now all the weight of the racket is going to be in the head of the racket. And something very interesting happens when we do our shadow stroke. So when I do my forehand, when the racket uh, passes this point right here, the weight of the racket almost pulls it backwards by itself. So you get a much larger finish than you normally would. So on the forehand, uh, once I pass this point, see the racket whips back on its own. And it's the same on the two-handed back end. As I pass this point, see the weight of the racket uh, pulls it backwards quite extensively. And on the one-handed back end, uh, for all you guys that have some limitations with range of motion, a uh, weight in the racket will make you finish far further uh, than you normally would. And on the serve, it's very similar. So once the racket goes up into the trophy phase, the weight of the racket will make the racket drop on its own. And so this is not a bad way to practice your service motion. Simply go through your serving mechanics and you will find that the racket will come in almost by itself. The weight of the racket will pull it down. And you can also do shadow volleys. The racket is extremely heavy and just doing the shadow movement uh, maybe for 30 seconds uh, to a minute and you're going to start feeling it in your arm and you can do it on your back and side as well. And you can do these same shadow strokes with movement that mimics the actual movement on a tennis court. So in this case the red cone is representing the middle of the baseline. I have the green cone on the forehand side and I got the blue cone on the backhand side. And basically I'm going to run to the green cone, I'm going to hit a forehand above the green cone, come back to the middle with side steps and then run to the blue cone, hit a backhand and then come back to the middle with side steps as well. And you do this for 45 seconds. And now a variation to this drill is to work on your change of direction. So you're going to go to the forehand cone, come back to the middle and then go again to your forehand cone and then run to the backhand cone, hit it, back to the middle and then back to the backhand cone. So you're going to hit two shots on the same cone. And now you can put the cones a little bit closer to each other and you can do the same drill on the volleys. Basically you're going from the forehand volley to the backhand volley. And now you can do the same volley drill uh, with working on changing directions at the net. And you need an extra cone that's going to represent the middle. You can also work on your closing volley and this is a really good drill. Basically you need two cones in front of you, one for the forehand, one for the backhand. Do not put a cone behind you or you're going to step on it and trip. You can also work on your overhead. You need one cone that you're going to touch and you're going to back up in a sideways position and you're going to mimic an overhead and you can actually practice getting airborne where you jump off your dominant leg and land on your non-dominant leg and when you're done you come back and touch the cone. I do this about 10 to 15 times. And guys while you're doing this you're working on two different things. You're working on your movement at the same time your arm is working too because you have that weight on your racket and it makes the finishing the strokes much easier, which happens to be a problem at the recreational level where players do not always finish their strokes and when they're put under pressure on the run. Guys, I remember Michael Jordan sitting during a timeout and on the bench he was just bouncing the ball with his hand. 
and I think he was doing this uh, to strengthen his wrist. So I was thinking why not do this with the tennis racket and we can strengthen our wrist as well. Uh, so basically you're going to do this uh, for 5 to 10 minutes and you're going to start feeling it in your forearm and your wrist. This is a great way uh, to strengthen those areas. Now I'm doing this now in a forehand grip and the interesting thing is if I change my grip to a continental now I'm all of a sudden working on a little different muscle groups and my arm is in a different position. So you can do uh, the forehand grip for a while and then you change it to a continental grip and also uh, you can do it with an eastern backhand grip and work on the back of your hand. And guys I can tell you that I'm doing it only for a couple of minutes now and I can already feel it big time in my forearm. If you see here uh, my forearm muscles are flexing and I'm already getting tired. So this is a great way to stabilize uh, your hand, your wrist and your forearm which will help uh, various areas of your tennis game. You can also do this drill while doing the wall sit. This is going to work your legs and your forearm and wrist at the same time. Now do this as long as you can. I can hold this position for about a minute. Uh, that's when my legs start to collapse. <laughs> Guys, you can also play against the wall at your house, but be very careful and do not use a real tennis ball because you're gonna miss hit it. It's gonna go through a window. So take one of these softballs and this is pretty safe. You can also go into a lunge position and then try to hold this position while volleying. This is gonna be difficult in a couple of different ways. You'll have to control the ball really well and then work your legs to hold the lunge position. Works the same way on the back end, get into a lunge position and then try to control the back end volley. You'll have to hit it very accurately so you don't have to lose your position you're in. How about working on your abs and volleying at the same time? Basically lift your feet off the ground uh, and volley in this position maybe for a minute or so and you're not only going to start feeling it in your forearm but it's going to work your abs as well. And there is a way to hit your strokes at full speed at home and all you need is a backyard, you need a couple of trees, you need a rope and a blanket. Make sure you set up your blanket high enough so that when you hit the top part of the blanket it should be above the level of the net. But I want to stress that this is an advanced drill only for players who know how to aim. If you're not sure that you're going to hit the blanket, uh, this is possibly going to be dangerous. You're going to start spraying balls all over the place. After doing all these exercises, I feel like I had a pretty good workout. So if you do this every day and then hopefully when we soon get back on the tennis courts, you're going to be ready to play and in shape. Be safe, guys.